Hey guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today I've got a philosophical question for you guys and that is, is two eyes better than one? You're like, whoa, slow down. <laughs> let's, let's put the handbrake on. Is this a philosophy channel now? Well, of course not. Um, so anyway, today we're just taking a look at the Orion Bina Viewer. Um, these are, you know, like in the $200 price range, they've been around for a while. Um, I actually recently came across these with the scope setup that I bought, so I thought I'd do a review of them. For those of you that are not familiar, um, I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Um, over the years, I've owned uh, over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count, so I'm kind of an astro nerd. I love this stuff. Um, anyhow, so <clears throat> we are going to get down to the observatory. Uh, do some observing with the Orion Bino Viewer. Uh, we're actually going to compare it to a much more premium. Uh, this is the Denkemeyer Binotron. This is like a $1,200 Bino Viewer. And of course, a single eyepiece. And you know, you guys, if you watch my YouTube channel, know that I love the battery zoom. So we're going to use that. Uh, so, I know, yeah, let's get down there. Alrighty, guys, check out that view. There's the 12 inch mead advanced coma frame pointed at Jupiter. And we've got the Orion uh, Bino viewers going on with the 18 millimeter battery classic orthos. So I've showed this setup before and you know, in previous videos, this is kind of my primary setup that I run out of the observatory. Again, it's the mead advanced coma free, um, Les Monde G11 mount. Um, <clears throat> You know, for those super nerdy and uh, kind of technical folk like me, um, as you can see right now, I'm actually getting the aperture of the scope clipped, you know, by probably, I'd say about 20%. It's not really clear in the wall just because of, of how uh, low Jupiter is to the horizon. Um, the walls of the observatory are just too high, but it doesn't really affect anything. The comparison is pretty much the same. So now, yeah, I'm going to get to... Uh, doing some comparisons here and uh, we'll get back to what the results are. All right, guys, now that we kind of took a look at the equipment we got going on, I'm gonna start uh, taking my first look with the battery zoom. Uh, this isn't my first time looking with this equipment, so you know, I'm, I kind of know what to expect, but you know, I wanna make this as fair as a comparison as I can. Same night, same equipment. Um, I'm using about the same magnification. So the battery zoom, I'm probably gonna set about the 16 millimeter setting, and then with the Bino viewers, we're using a um, 18 millimeter eyepiece because the Bino viewers do give you a little bit longer focal length with the scope. So we're gonna be operating at about 165X or so, roughly speaking. So here he goes. Alrighty guys, so what are my impressions with the batteries? I mean, tonight the scene is not amazing, but it's actually not bad. Um, so it's actually, you know, I'd say pretty good scene for the Northwest here. Um, just overall, you know, I'm seeing a good amount of bands I'm seeing. I counted probably around eight bands in Jupiter right now. Um, I just, I checked the astronomy app before uh, Sky Safari, before, you know, I started observing. Uh, the gray red spots are already hidden, but there's actually, you know, a decent sized festoon that I could see out there. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, you know, contrast is pretty good with the setup. Uh, so yeah, so, you know, right now we're gonna switch over to the Orion uh, Bino Viewer and, you know, kind of do a comparison and see, you know, kind of what's going on with that. By the way, you know, one other thing that I haven't, you know, talked about with the setup, uh, so you kind of saw me messing with the manual focus here, right? So I, I do, you know, a rough focus with that. And then I actually have an electric focus that lets me do a very, this is a stepper motor and this kind of has distinct clicks so I could do very, very minute adjustments in the focus with this without, you know, actually touching the scope and causing it to shake around. So, you know, that really helps with getting the focus down, you know, super, you know, super accurately with this guy.
Alrighty guys, so quick update here. Um, so I took a, you know, a decent look with the Orion Bino viewer. And um, I don't know if you guys noticed any difference kind of in the time lapse and the, you know, speeded up video. Uh, but, you know, the big difference, right, is that, you know, I'm not like busy there, you know, trying to cover up my eye. So that, I don't, you know, and usually, you know, you could close your eye right, man, you know, like with your eyelid. Uh, but that puts, you know, strain on your eye, especially if you're, you know, doing it for a prolonged, you know, period of time. It just, it's just not comfortable and you're definitely not going to see as much detail. So usually what I do is I just take my, I actually keep my eye open in a lot of cases or, you know, sometimes if I close it, you know, I'll kind of put my, my fingers, you know, lightly on my eyelid to kind of, you know, help to keep some of the strain off anyhow so you know you kind of have to keep on closing your eye even with the really excellent you know single eyepiece just you know our our minds and our brains are designed to observe with two eyes so having said that you know what difference do i see um, you know, the contrast and the banding is just obviously better with the bind of your everything is just much easier to pick out like that festoon that's going on on Jupiter right now just pops into view. You know, with the bind of your the other thing that's kind of crazy is that everything is just more 3D. Um, so, you know, it's the view, um, I would say going from a single eyepiece to a bind of your is way better than you buying, you know, even those, you know, like super monos, uh, like, you know, like ultra premium, uh, planetary eyepieces. I mean, a bind of your just increases the view substantially. You know, I'm actually pretty darn impressed, uh, with the Orion, you know, bind of your, even though I do have, um, Again, the Dank Binotron, which is about as premium of a Bino viewer as you could get. And I'm actually pop about to pop this sucker in after, you know, the Orion here, you know, just so I can kind of get a direct comparison between these. But man, for Jupiter, I mean, yeah, I'd say for the planets and for the moon, I mean, that's a pretty darn sharp view, you know. I mean, I, I really don't see anything wrong with that at all. Um, so yeah, but you know, we'll pop this sucker in and you know, kind of I'll, I'll get back to you, you know, as far as if I see any actual optical difference. Alrighty guys, so just observed through the thousand dollar plus uh, Binotron. Uh, what difference do I see? So, you know, quite frankly, as far as the detail that I actually see on the planet, it's really very, very similar. Like I wouldn't really say that this is showing more detail than the Orion, you know, Bino viewer which is a very, very big pat on the back for that thing, okay, for the planets anyway. Um, now there is one, you know, fairly decent difference. So Jupiter is, you know, low in the horizon right now. Um, and when stuff is low in the, to the horizon, right, the atmosphere actually basically kind of acts as a prism and, um, you actually could get a little bit of secondary color on one side of the planet. And I'm not sure why, maybe it's because this thing actually uses better prisms, you know, I, you know, I'm not an optical expert, but the, um, uh, the Orion Bino Viewer, it is actually showing more of that atmospheric dispersion, like I'm seeing more purple on one side of Jupiter than I do with the Binotron, which probably tells me this does use better prisms, you know, like the, maybe the light scatter control is better. But man, I mean, you know, for the very little entry-level price of, uh, of the Orion, um, you know, the views are actually very, very similar on the planets. So if you're into the moon, uh, the planets, um, I mean, heck, I mean, that's a pretty nice, you know, bino viewer. Um, so I'm actually going to do a little bit of viewing, um, on deep sky tonight. It's not the best night for that. There's a little bit of haze going on and the moon's out kind of behind us out there. Um, but I just want to kind of get a comparison because that's where, you know, really where the bino is going to, you know, it's supposed to do better anyhow. And then, you know, uh, we'll meet up back inside and kind of conclude and, you know, and, you know, I'll kind of talk about what I think, you know, what the, what the difference is between a single view, uh, the Orion Bino Viewer, and a more, much more premium Bino Viewer as well. So see you guys inside. Alrighty, guys, welcome back. It's a little bit warmer in, uh, in here than it uh, was in the observatory. 
All right, so let's kind of, you know, conclude uh, what I thought about the views with all of these, and then we'll kind of talk about some of the, you know, physical characteristics and differences with these guys and what kind of separates all these. Um, single eyepiece, you know, a lot of time, a lot of nights I will use a single eyepiece, you know, for even observing the planets and the moon, it's just quicker, it's lighter, right? Especially with like something like a, the, the zoom, you know, it's just, it's just convenient. Now, on nights when I can see that the scene's pretty good and, you know, I've got the time to do it, I will take out a bino viewer and I would say 95% of the time, I see more detail with the bino viewer than I do with the single eyepiece on the planets and the moon. Very, very big improvement. Now, like I said before, this is my, you know, my, you know, personal bino viewer. Um, and you might be thinking, well, hey, Vlad, I mean, this thing, you know, it's like way more expensive, you know, like, so it's, uh, the reason that you probably see more details because, you know, it's just a much, you know, it's a really premium unit. Well, you'd be wrong. Um, I was actually, you know, I was pretty, pretty shocked, you know, at how close the view was of Jupiter with this thing compared to my Binotron. I mean, realistically, um, you know, brightness wise, I'd say this might have been a hair, like a hair brighter on Jupiter. Uh, but Jupiter, you know, I mean, assuming, assuming you've got a decent size scope that's, let's say, like a four inch or so or, you know, bigger. I mean, it's plenty bright enough, right? So you're not really lacking in the brightness uh, department. Contrast was really good with this. You know, I was honestly, I was really impressed with the views that I got with this thing. Um, when I went, you know, from the single eyepiece to this, I mean, all the stuff that I was kind of struggling to see, you know, detail-wise in this, I easily saw with the Bino viewer. Switched to the Binotron, you know, I, I really, you know, honestly, the best way I'd summarize it is I struggled to see a difference between the views here of the planets. Now, we talked about the planets on the moon. Um, so how is the view compared to um, on deep sky objects, you know, comparing a single eyepiece to, you know, an intro level bino viewer and to a higher end uh, bino viewer? Um, this is where it kind of gets a lot more technical. So a bino viewer, obviously, you know, it does split the light, you know, from one source into two, uh, you know, eyepieces, essentially. So you'd figure it's, you know, it's twice as dim of a view, but it actually is not, because our brain does, you know, whatever it does, and it actually combines it. I think you lose like 20% of the light or so. So it really, you know, I mean, I could spend like, you know, four hours talking about this, but I'll condense it down really compactly. <laughs> Um, on brighter deep sky objects, sometimes I do prefer the view with the Bino viewer. Um, on dimmer stuff, like, you know, think dim galaxies, dim planetary nebula, um, I almost always prefer the view through a single eyepiece. So it really depends. It also depends on how big your scope is. Like when I, you know, when I have a big DAW belt, you know, a lot of times I actually will be using the Bino viewer. Um, but even then though, for the dim stuff, a single eyepiece does work better. Now, how, how do these two compare? Uh, this is where the huge, you know, like gash and gap is gonna be in performance between these. Uh, first of all, the light throughput, the prisms are gonna be better on this. So uh, the image is gonna be a little bit brighter here. Uh, the other difference that this, I believe, uses a 23 millimeter prism. This uses a 27 millimeter prism. Uh, so basically, you can use a wider field of view eyepiece without vignette and without basically having black around the field of view. So if you're kind of more interested in uh, deep sky observing, you know, it's, it's, this wouldn't be like a clear recommendation, you know, I would say. Uh, however, though, most people get a bino viewer for the planets, right? And I would say for the planets, I mean, man, the performance of this thing for a couple hundred bucks is totally, totally amazing. Now, just in case you're curious, um, you know, like what the other differences are with these, um, I'll kind of cover real quickly. The other difference with this, right, is that the way that the eyepiece is held with the Orions is that there's a set screw that holds it, right, kind of like, you know, like in a standard diagonal. And there is a compression ring, which is really nice. Uh, now, normally that works, you know, perfectly fine. With the Bino viewer, this is actually not that great because when you uh, set that set screw, right, it could change the angle of the eyepiece. And if you change both the angles significantly enough, you just can't merge the image. Like your brain will not be able to, you know, produce a single image. 
Now, what the what more premium vinyl viewers usually use is they use this compression ring type of setup to where it basically compresses like a plastic ring totally around the eyepiece and keeps it totally centered in the binary viewer. So that's really cool. Um, the focusing mechanism on these is actually the same. So there's, you know, there's like a focus that will raise and lower the eyepiece to focus. The Orion uses the same thing, very smooth, very nice feel. I mean, this is like very nice actually for the focusing mechanism. Um, other differences, this is collimatable by the user. This guy is not, so like if you happen to drop that, it's basically a trip back to the factory. Uh, this one does have the power switch, so you could have three different power settings, right, to where, you know, you could do uh, like, you know, no magnification, low magnification, high magnification, and it does have a power or a filter switch to where you could, you know, have two different two inch filters that you put in there. So very, very handy, you know, it's a much more premium system. Um, kind of covering a couple of other physical things about the Orion. This guy does include a two inch or two, two inch, two X, uh, <laughs> Barlow element, right? And this you'll have to use with the refractor to reach focus. You can't use a binovir with in a refractor without this. Uh, to, you just won't be able to reach focus. Uh, with an SCT, this thing you know just goes straight in, and that's how I used it without the Barlow last night. Um, and you could reach focus just fine with that. Overall construction-wise on this thing, um, the metal or the body is made out of metal, like this, the actual you know like mechanism. Very smooth, you know, the interpupillary uh, adjustments, very smooth, very fluid on this. These are plastic, like little covers for the prisms. Um, I mean, they feel nice. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't have any issues with that. So anyhow, guys, to uh, kind of conclude this and bring the ship home and not make this video 14 hours long. <laughs> um, is a bind of your worth it? If you're a planetary guy, if you're a moon type of guy, Trust, like, believe me, it's especially after trying this, you know, like last night, this is the single best accessory you could buy. You will see more details. It's easier to see details. Um, I, you know, again, I was pretty darn impressed with how, you know, my very premium binary compared to this then, uh, you know, this is the BAK4 version. So this, I think does have the better, like more modern prism. So that's probably why this compared really favorably with this. Um, so yeah, you know, if, if you're kind of, you know, like looking to improve the views that you get of the planets, trust me, it's not by buying a better eyepiece. It's by buying one of these. Um, so anyhow, if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.